What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I am back with another Anthem news video with much to talk about including crafting, trading, in-game chases, gear progression, DLC and much much more. But hey guys before we get into that if you guys would like to support the channel, hitting that like button truly does help out and I do appreciate that support. Also if you are new around here and want more Anthem videos, be sure to subscribe. Okay so let's get into all this juicy new information. Now this information comes from executive producer of the game, Mark Derra. He is doing a great great job in answering many many questions regarding the game and all of this info comes from him. Okay, so I will start with a slight mistake I made within the last video, which was 50 Anthem things you need to know. That video can be found on my channel if you do want to check it out. Within that video, I spoke of first person view being available for use while playing Anthem. That's actually not the case. The first person view is only used when in your hub, basically Fort Tarsis, and your portable base which is known as the Strider. The Strider is a place you can change suits as well as do many other things only doable within the safe zone of Fort Tarsis. But yeah, first person will only be available within your hub locations. And why is this you might be asking? Well, Mark Dera confirms it's for three reasons. We want Fort Tarsis to feel tight and human sized. First person will require wider halls. When you walk near a javelin, we want you to feel their size. And within your javelins, you have enhanced senses. So yes, people, I apologize for the mistake. First person view will only be available within Fort Tarsis and your strider, basically your hub zones. Will there be an option to change to first person while flying about? I ain't quite sure yet. So I apologize for the mistake, but let's move on. Now within Destiny, we have our companion. Goes absolutely everywhere with us. Within Destiny, he's known as our ghost, or Little Light as the stranger first called him. Many other games have companions of such which guide you on your journey, help with interactions, and so forth. Within Anthem, you have a similar thing known as a cipher. The cipher is a human though, who interacts with you through your javelin suit. Not much at the moment is known about your relationship with this cipher, and how it comes to be your guide within the game. As soon as more details are released, you guys will be the first to know. So moving on and more on the javelin suit, as you know you are a freelancer, and you level up your freelancer, javelin suits we know you start with the ranger and unlock the other suits via missions in the game. Now you can unlock whichever javelin you want to unlock, it is determined by the order of missions you do. But they state we start with the ranger as it's a good suit for learning to explore the game. Basically the ranger is the all round suit offering average stats across the board. So we start off with the ranger and we do certain missions to unlock the other three javelin suits. Now we do know the javelin suits are equipped with a special attack, many refer to these as supers. At the moment there is only one super attack per javelin suit. Now let's move on to a little more about your freelancer and your javelins and how you will upgrade such. Well firstly you can customise your freelancer, basically like a character editor. Yes you can be male or female, but we are limited to humans only, so no exo robots etc etc. Something I have been wondering about and has now been answered is the progression of our javelins. Leveling the game is locked to your freelancer. Say you level up your freelancer using the storm javelin suit, changing into the interceptor will mean gear drops accordingly to the level of your freelancer, so javelin suits won't be left behind if you decide to play with one suit, and then later on down the line you switch to another. Another thing I was wondering was can we have multiples of the same javelin suits, meaning we can basically have multiple individual loadout setups and customization options for the same javelin suits. Unfortunately we can't. But I do believe there will be a way to save configurations for our suits and the same goes with customization options on our javelin suits. As we know we can make every javelin suit real individual to how we want with the possibilities of changing most things including colour etc etc. Something else I was interested in knowing about was well if we say unlock the storm we create a real unique look and we like this look and we want to keep this look and carry it throughout the entire game. Can we do that? or would we have to equip higher level gear to progress within the later harder missions, which would change our current and wanted look? Well, it's been confirmed our look and loadout are independent, meaning we can play how we want to play, with whatever look we decide to go with. This is great for someone like me who plays games like Destiny, where your gear is locked and you can't really wear what you want for most instances. Javelin suits have been confirmed to be very customizable also, which is great. We also know the javelin suits play different roles, some would say basically like individuals, 
each other's unique things you'd expect. Mark Doe was asked, any support healing abilities from any other javelins? Mark replied with, we aren't discussing the specifics of the storm and interceptor yet. Meaning, well, as I see it as, in some way, shape or form, these two javelins might offer some kind of healing ability. We would just have to wait and see, guys. Now, I spot the other day of limitations within your javelin suit. It is quite obvious because you can fly and swim within the suit that there would be cooldowns of said features in place. Flying, your jetpacks heat up and you will have to land to cool them down and underwater you have an oxygen meter. Landing to cool down your jets isn't the only way of cooling them down though. Going into water also does the job. Also confirmed by Mark on Twitter, hovering under a waterfall does it too. So that's pretty cool. I ain't sure about in-game rain though, I doubt it would be enough to cool them down, plus it wouldn't make sense because when it rains, you'd have infinite flying abilities. We would just have to wait and see on that, but I do doubt that will be the case. Also, as I have mentioned in the previous video, outside of Fort Tarsus is a dangerous place. Taking damage from enemies will obviously happen. So your health, how does it work? Well, it doesn't regen, but enemies do drop health bricks. Also, the same works with ammo for your weapons. Enemies will drop ammo packs. So that's pretty cool. Now while in the wild, as we have seen, battles do look great. One thing that did concern me though was the damage numbers and how they seem to spam the screen, which I could see getting annoying for many people. So can we turn them off or maybe minimize their on-screen effect? Mark Doe confirmed he will be looking into this. I guarantee though people there will be an option on launch day where we can tone these down. Another thing which can be seriously annoying is matching against randoms and they do nothing but sit there. Idle detection is a must and it's been confirmed to be in the game so that's good. Now onto matchmaking, all content within the game will have matchmaking so that's great for solo players looking for a team for certain strongholds, certain missions or help with other places. We also know that individual servers have a max of 4 players in them, but they are looking to increase this number. This means when running around in free roam, you might come across three other players. You're probably wondering what free play is, right? Well, it's a mod which lets you go out into the world and explore this beautiful planet. Within free play, you will be able to jump in with people and help them with an objective, so to speak. So expect to see such things like public events. This is something you can also do without joining their party too. Free play is also a mode in which, like I said, you can explore the world, but also discover some of the in-game lore too, gather materials and so forth. And yes, there is a storage place for the lore you find. I'm guessing it will have its own tab somewhere, maybe within Fort Tarsus, who knows. Now we know this game is an open world, but there is a story with set missions. What happens when you complete the story? Does the game go on to offer more? Indeed it does people, there is lots of replayability as well as many side quests and missions not associated with the main story, so that's good. We need replayability. Now we know things like the strongholds are not required for you to complete the story, so these will definitely be a part of that end game grind. Mark confirms there will be challenging end game mechanics too. Now onto end game and while the point in continuing to play and that is that beautiful loot, things to chase, weapons to unlock and upgrade, same with armour, it's what we all love. Certain instances and features in the game will offer their own unique loot tables, no doubt exclusive to said features. Although not confirmed but I'm guessing certain bosses or in world creatures will drop certain gear exclusive to maybe either that enemy or that area of the world. There are also chests in the game which don't require keys which you can find all over the planet. Stronghold loot has a higher rarity offering but he mentions he don't believe or ain't sure if the loot is locked to the stronghold but it seems it does have a higher rarity drop rate of gear which you would expect. Also confirmed is the addition of stronger enemies spawning within the world. These will be bigger, better and stronger than the usual mobs. These no doubt will have loot tied with them. Now loot is instant as I've mentioned before. This means that if four people do a certain mission, loot drops cannot be stolen. Your loot is your loot. And if it does drop people, it will show up near the enemy you just defeated. Now more onto loot and crafting people has been confirmed, meaning no doubt you can go out into the wild world, collect certain things, maybe like materials, schematics and craft a said piece of gear you will no doubt be able to pick and chase. Trading is a feature many people are wondering about, mixed opinions on this subject, for me I think it's best it isn't in the game, it makes for just a too easy progression shortcut for newcomers to the game who have friends who have played from the beginning. Mark Doe confirmed there will be no trading in the game, at least for now, so that is great news in my opinion, and he does mean this in a sense of trading with other people, not in-game vendors. 
Trading with in-game vendors will no doubt be a feature as it's been confirmed there is also an in-game currency for you to collect and use. This in my opinion was kind of obvious, it's another reason behind grinding said objectives and features. Now more things to cover, emotes will be in the game so no doubt you will be able to have a dance party and that's pretty epic. So let's move on to DLC, but first let's talk about pre-orders of the game and loot you receive. Well for pre-ordering the Legion of Dawn edition you get the Legion of Dawn exclusive items. Pre-ordering the game is the only way you can obtain these items, they cannot be unlocked in game through grind. This also includes a legendary weapon, DLC, where there will be no season pass and that has been confirmed. New DLC story content, new game spaces will be for everybody, so won't be locked behind a paywall of DLC. DLCs might be future javelin suit vanity items, but it's also be confirmed that all of the things you can buy through DLC can be earned in game, and these vanity items will offer nothing in terms of power, just appearance. So that's pretty cool. So over the past few days since the EA Play demo of the game, many many new details have come out on the actual game and expect plenty more to follow. I will as always guys have you covered on all the latest Anthem news right here on my channel. So if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe people. And that is it for another video, some seriously interesting points covered here. I'm curious to learn more about the loot, crafting and the in-game currency. Also end game grind too. Will there be specific bosses that do have their own unique loot tables that we can farm, kind of like Monster Hunter, that would be absolutely epic. I mean there is a lot of time for coverage between now and February 22nd when the game is released, so as they say, expect to hear much more on the game between now and then. But guys, on that note, I am out. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like truly helps me and my channel out. If you are new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, hit that bell button too. Again, thanks for stopping by people and hopefully I will see you on that next one. Get around.